Hello and welcome to Kildartan College. My name is Patrick Heffernan and today I'm going to talk to you about sustainable slurry usage and sustainable slurry application. Slurry is readily available on farms and with the correct and sustainable usage and effective usage, slurry can reduce your chemical fertiliser intake on the farm. So when it comes to slurry application, there's a where, when and a method. So where do we spread slurry? We try to target paddocks that are low in um, P and K. When it comes to when, we try to avoid spreading on a avoid spreading in summer. Slurry spreading should take place on a dull, damp day and preferably in spring. So when it comes to our methods of, of applying slurry, we have a couple of different applicators. We have a splash plate, dribble bar, trailing shoe, and an injector system. These are all different types of applicators. Slurry application has advanced over the last couple of years moving on from our splash plate to our dribble bar, trading shoe and up to our injection systems. So today here we have a splash plate and a trading shoe on show. You can see both spread patterns, okay. Why do we move from a splash plate to a trading shoe? It's for the simple reason of if you were trying to um, dry your clothes on a, on, a, on a windy day, okay, you would spread the clothes out to get the most surface area for the sun to be able to evaporate the water and dry out your clothes. Okay, this applies to slurry as well. When you spread with a splash plate, you're going to spread uh, a wide pattern, a thin film under high pressure across the grass. This pressure is going to create uh, some of the slurry to turn to vapor and escape into the atmosphere. And also, when you apply a thin film of slurry across a large area, you're going to, there's a larger surface area for evaporation to occur. So comparing this to the trading shoe, we're putting the slurry into small thin lines onto the soil, okay? The splash plate is going to apply the slurry onto the grass. The grass, the leaf in the grass is not going to absorb in the slurry. We depend on the rain to actually wash the slurry down into the soil. With the trading shoe, it's actually applying the slurry between the grass. There's a steel tip on the trading shoe and it's going to part the grass and apply the slurry onto the ground. Also, this is going to increase nutrient intake and it's also going to reduce the emission from the slurry, the greenhouse gas emissions. When it comes to the TAMS grant, okay, our targeted agricultural modernization scheme, these machines come under this grant scheme under the LESS scheme, which is the low emission slurry spreading system scheme. All these Applicators, trading shoes and dribble bars are becoming very popular in Ireland uh, through this grant scheme. A young farmer can avail of up to 60% grant on these machines. From a farmer's point of view, why would you move away from a splash plate to a trading shoe? Um, to begin with, okay, you can see here on our board, the nitrogen loss is going to be a lot less with a trading shoe. As I spoke about evaporation, okay, when you spread with a splash plate, you're applying a thin film. This is going to cr create a large uh, surface area for evaporation to occur and that nitrogen is going to evaporate from the slurry. With the trading shoe, that evaporation is much less, as I said. So we'll say with a thousand gallons of average cattle slurry spreading on a spring day, you're spreading with a splash plate, you're probably spreading roughly six units of nitrogen per a thousand gallons of cattle slurry. When spreading with a trading shoe, you're spreading the same slurry, you could be spreading nine units per thousand gallons of the same cattle slurry. Okay, so also from a farmer's point of view, a trading shoe is going to be a great benefit. Um, as you can see, we're in a grass field here. You can come into a grass field with a trailing shoe and you can apply the slurry to the soil. The steel tip on the trailing shoe is going to part the grass. <clears throat> this is going to reduce the contamination to the grass, okay? So if we look at the splash plate, it has completely covered all the leaf of the grass. Um, the trailing shoe is only going to place it in between the grass and the contamination is far less. How this would benefit a farmer is uh, returning to a paddock to graze after a slurry. Cows are going to much prefer the grass after a trailing shoe due to much less contamination and a farmer can return to a paddock grazing up to 10 days after spreading with a trailing shoe compared to probably 
up to two, week, two to three weeks after a splash plate. The sustainable use of slurry moving forward is going to be very important as Ireland has agreed to reduce its greenhouse gases by up to 30% by 2030. This is only going to be achievable with the use of these low emission slurry spreading, low, low emission slurry spreading applicators. And this is going to be key in Ireland meeting this 2030 target as, as Irish agriculture produces 30% of the overall Irish greenhouse gases. Hello, my name is Declan Byrne and today we're going to discuss the importance of grass in dairy farming and the, its role within conservation agriculture. Grass is a vital source of carbon storage and it sequesters large amounts of carbon into the soil each year. Farmers stocked at 2.5 livestock units per hectare will require uh, 13 tonnes of grass dry matter per hectare per annum to feed their cows and they will aim to utilise at least 10 tonnes of this grass. This will require the application of 230 units of nitrogen per hectare on the grass. The first step in grassland management is good nitrogen use efficiency when applying fertilisers. The EU Green Deal and Farm for Fork strategies recommend a 30% reduction in chemical nitrogen usage by the year 2030. With this in mind, farmers should apply nitrogen to, to the soil when temperatures are above 6 degrees and when weather conditions allow for, for spreading. All farmers should measure grass on farms on a weekly basis. Grass measuring allows you to quantify the amount of grass you're growing on the farm and will identify deficits or surpluses before they arise. Cows such as the cows here should be entering covers of 15 to 1600 kilograms of dry matter per hectare uh, for, for proper grass utilisation. Where this occurs, uh, increased milk solids will be uh, produced on farm. The most accurate measuring tools for measuring grass is number one, the rising plate meter which measures the height of the grass and number two, the quadrant which estimates the dry matter percentage in the grass and then weighs the, the grass and, and gives you a quantity of yield. Farmers should input their weekly grass measuring data on Pasture Base app. Pasture Base allows for individual monitoring of paddock performance and will highlight poorly performing paddocks within the system. These paddocks may need to be reseeded or drainage work carried out to improve overall grass growth. Pasture Base is also excellent for creating grass wedge which can uh, match stocking rate to grass supply and dictate rotations on the farm. Research has shown that where one tonne of extra grass can be utilised within the system each year, uh, benefits of 180 euros extra farm profit per hectare can be generated. Environmental benefits of grass, of grass also include uh, improvements in greenhouse gas emissions and reduced leaching in the soil. So for these reasons, good grassland management are essential for conservation agriculture.